Well, hello everyone and welcome to the episode, the other episode that you all have been waiting for. I know I said that once we uh, kind of finished the garden and uh, everything was finalized. However, not everything was planted, not everything was watered. We saw to plant some beans and some corn and we managed to fit in a few extra plants. You know, you know how that is. You kind of squeeze them in some extra spots. So we are completely finished. I know you all are going to love it. So I want to give you a quick tour of the garden, show you how we're doing, uh, show, show you everything that's going on. And uh, there's some surprises. Some things have changed. Plans are always kind of in flux until they're completely finished and they're always open to change. Um, and so we, we kind of realize that. We come in with an open mind and say, if things change, that's okay. You know, we're not, our heart is not set, but um, things have, things I think have changed for the better. So check it out. All right, so this is, as you walk in, obviously nothing much has changed here. This is all of the coal of the crops, your Swiss chard and your kale. We have some, we have two different types of kale here. Uh, actually three different types of kale. We have the premier kale, which is right here. We have the, the dinosaur kale or the, the lacinato kale, which is right there. And we have the, the red Russian kale, which is right there. We do have obviously the oregano, like we said, dispersed throughout the beds. Um, and what I wanted to show you was how this turned out. This goji berry turned out great here. We put in uh, some marigolds and stuff around the base to really make it fill out nicely. And you'll see that's kind of the theme is just kind of interplanting and getting as much biodiversity as possible still while kind of having a theme. So this bed is themed with a goji berry. Uh, for instance, that bed is themed with peppers. We were going to put white clover there. However, the white clover did not arrive in time and I just had to get it planted. I wanted to see it planted and I'm kind of like that, you know what I mean? If I have plants that can fit there, I'm gonna put them there. There's plenty of stuff for the bees to feed on and believe it or not, throughout the entire yard, there's actually white clover uh, that, that blooms in the summertime. Now, what I did wanna show you is over here, this is actually the new location for where we're going to put a resting bench and bird feeder. We're gonna put in some brick pavers and it's going to be a really nice place where you can sit in and out of the garden coming in you can, you can rest, relax, and soak it all in. And when you're done with a busy day work, you're going to look over the entire garden the same way. You could sit, rest, and relax. And we have something over there that has changed. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go show you that as we walk. Um, over here, you have the, the red cabbage, the celery, and the, the green cabbage. This is uh, Wakefield giant cabbage and a uh, late flat Dutch cabbage. That is all red acre cabbage and that's just a Utah celery. Here's our uh, uh, number two tomato bed. This tomato bed, it, we're using, um, again, more biodiversity. So instead of planting like we did in that tomato bed, that tomato bed has three rows of tomatoes, which we're not yet finished staking them up. Uh, we're not even finished staking these up. We gotta get more T-posts. Uh, but in the center of every of every bed, we kind of want to try something different. And so with this center, we're actually trying marigolds and basil because those are complements to the tomatoes. And it's a very good way to deter pests organically because a lot of pests don't like the, uh, the marigolds. For instance, nematodes do not like the marigolds. And a lot of things like aphids don't like the basil. So uh, we're just really integrating that stuff in to do uh, kind of an integrated pest management system. Um, it very organically, by the way, too. Uh, so then more tomatoes here. Over here, we actually have three borage plants we planted, and this is all potatoes. This is, uh, I'm not, I cannot remember exactly which ones we planted. I think they're a pinto potato and a purple potato um, in this bed. And then at the end, obviously, you have more marigolds. Coming over here, this is all peppers. This is just solid pepper bed. Nothing else has been interplanted in here. This is just, just peppers. Um, but it's going to look fantastic when it's all said and done. Obviously, you have the asparagus bed, which we have mulched to keep the perennial weeds down, and it looks fantastic. We cannot be happier. Over here, there is the uh, cucumbers with the new trellis we put up. This is just a nylon trellising, and it, it works really, really good for trellising. It's a cheap method that you can take down, roll up, and use next year. It doesn't deteriorate, doesn't break down, um, and it's, like I said, very, very cheap. Um, more, more oregano here. And these are all different types of cucumbers. So you have like the sour gherkins, that's a bush pickle, um, a white, those are white cucumbers. Those are uh, Armenian yard long cucumbers. Those are uh, market more cucumbers, straight eight, uh, straight eight cucumbers, uh, uh, burpless cucumbers, 
and uh, I can't exactly remember what these are. Um, <laughs> these are uh, more straight eights and um, and more market mores. So, you know, a little bit of mix of everything there. And then coming back here, I wanted to show you what I'm super excited about, which is our uh, rhubarb bed. Our rhubarb bed is going to look fantastic when it's all growing up. You might ha have a hard time seeing them, but we actually have eight plants here eight rhubarb plants that are doing phenomenal. We've put them right in the mulch there and uh, and they're just going to grow here in the ground. And we've mulched super heavily, um, very much in the back to Eden style gardening method. So a bunch of people that wanna see the back to Eden methods, you're going to get a little taste of that. Um, now over here, this is uh, tomato bed number three. This is all tomatoes here, just solid tomatoes, nothing else. This bed here has some marigolds and solid uh, beans. We planted all green beans here. Um, more marigolds in the back. These ones are actually flowering. They're super beautiful. Started all these from seed. Everything here, believe it or not, everything you see except for a few herbs has all been started from seed. So you gotta really be happy with that. I um, mean, it's, it's hard to be disappointed. Um, then over here, all this is all onions. We have different types of onions here, um, but mostly it's, uh, it's bulbing onions. We do have leeks in the center. And then this is a red onion patch and a yellow Spanish onion patch right there. Peppers at the end, just because we had the space, why not? Then over here, this is all uh, yellow beans. This entire bed right here is yellow beans with some white kohlrabi in the, uh, on the end caps and some more, uh, some more marigolds over there. This bed right here is not, nothing has come up yet, but we have uh, in four sections of this kind of quarter, we have yellow zucchini. Those are all gonna be popping up from seed before too long, we just planted the seeds. And then from this line on, it is all uh, of the, the Kennebec potatoes. So that's all potatoes there and some yellow squash or yellow zucchini. And then here, this is all gonna be corn. This is all going to be ambrosia sweet corn. It's not an heirloom variety of sweet corn because I really, really like ambrosia. It's just a great, great flavor. Um, and it's super easy to grow, very drought tolerant and huge, huge ears. But it's a peaches and cream variety and uh, non-GMO by the way. Um, so yes, yeah, so the ambrosia is here. And then we have a cantaloupe here. They're just gonna kind of vine like crazy. And uh, I'm gonna let them vine throughout the, the corn as well. We have a sugar baby watermelon, another sugar baby watermelon. Um, this is another type of melon. This is called a uh, Petite Days de Grem. Um, we got it from the plant sale that we filmed uh, at the high school. Uh, and so we got two of those we planted there. Now this is exciting. This is very exciting. I cannot wait to do a growing guide on these. This is uh, sweet potatoes. We have sweet potatoes here. We have two rows of those that we're just gonna let go crazy and, and vine throughout this entire area. And then back here, we actually planted, because we, again, we had the space in the kind of back to Eden style theme here. We have uh, actually a, a green globe artichoke that we planted. So that's gonna be a perennial there. We're gonna mulch it really heavily. It's gonna come back year after year. We might plant another one right there so it's symmetrical, who knows. Then here we have another potato bed. This is just, uh, I think this is, oh, uh, this is the, the fingerling potatoes, the uh, German fingerling potatoes. They're super small, but very delicious. And they're from my home country. Um, well, I was, I was born in the United States, but my ancestors are from Germany. So uh, in, their, in the theme of their, their, in honor of their heritage, uh, of our heritage, whatever, I, I don't know what I'm saying. It's been a hot day. I planted the, <laughs> the German fingerling potatoes. And then here is the final tomato bed here. Uh, again, just because we had space, I planted a kohlrabi there and some marigolds right there, but just get the biodiversity in. That's what I'm really stressing. Um, and these are all different varieties here. Over here, this is uh, a mixture of, uh, these are um, Brussels sprouts, the Long Island Brussels sprouts and Sun King broccoli. That half the bed is broccoli. This half, the, well, that two thirds of the bed is broccoli. This two thirds of the bed is uh, the, the Long Island Brussels sprouts. And then in between here, I actually started from seed holy basil. I put holy basil throughout this entire bed that's gonna be sprouting in the next couple days. And then I also have here uh, some more kohlrabi because why not? Um, <laughs> and then over here, this is all uh, basil and eggplants. And the reason why I did that is because uh, we needed more basil. We, I mean, you know, we didn't have enough basil as you, as you look throughout, we did not have enough basil whatsoever. Um, 
I'm kidding, but we just had the plants and we had some extra space. So uh, in went some long uh, Japanese long uh, eggplants and some black beauty eggplants. Um, and then the rest is Italian sweet basil. Uh, over here, skipped it, um, more basil. This is, our, this is our basil bed. This is kind of our basil collection. We have all the different types of basil we are growing, which is um, Thai basil, red Reuben basil, uh, the dwarf Greek basil, Italian sweet basil, uh, spicy glow basil, more Thai basil, a, uh, this is called uh, red, ruby red, ruby red basil, I think. Um, and then it repeats the cycle over again because the ruby red basil, we did not have as many of. Um, and then interplanted, I also have onions because again, why not? Um, and then <laughs> over here, um, actually, no, you know what? Over here, we have uh, kind of our Thai inspired thing. Again, more basil. We have Thai basil, which looks beautiful. We have lemon basil, uh, which is a new, a new, another different type of basil that we have. And uh, then some Thai lemongrass, which is lemongrass is just a phenomenal plant to grow. So we're gonna be making some lemongrass soup from scratch. It's gonna be amazing there. Um, and then over here we have, um, again, more herbs. This is our, this is kind of our herb bin. It was gonna be all perennials, but it ended up not being perennials. We have sage, cilantro. This is an amazing AAS winner. Uh, this is actually called purple ruffles or ru uh, yeah. Yeah, purple ruffles, there you go. Had it right the first time. Um, and I got two of those, absolutely stunning. Some dill in the center there. Uh, this is a Russian tarragon, rosemary, uh, some more oregano, some more spicy glow basil, and some uh, just some parsley there. Then you have your giant, giant centerpiece. This is the huge oregano plant that we've had for three years now. Um, back to the pepper bed, I already showed that. This is another pepper bed that's interplanted with marigolds. This is gonna look beautiful when this is all said and done here. Um, and again, more, more are blossoming, just absolutely beautiful, I love those. Um, and then over here, we have uh, more kale and um, I planted, this is all red Russian kale. And then I planted here a tomatillo, because again, why not? And that's right in the center of six, uh, of the Black Beauty zucchini. So the Black Beauty zucchinis are just a prolific producer that we had last year. And then the Golden Zucchini, which is over there. So we really are sticking to just two varieties of zucchini this year. Um, and then over here is again, all onions. We have uh, almost 200 onions in this bed alone. This is just a beautiful, beautiful bed of onions. We have the Kelsey onions, which are the giant onions we saved from seed. And then we have the, uh, the Spanish white onions here. So that's everything. That is everything. I, I'm really pleased with how it looks. I'm happy with how everything turned out. And uh, let me know what you think. I, I think uh, I think it looks amazing, but um, <laughs> I don't know. It's all, it's, uh, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, right? So there you go. There is a nice little walk through the garden. I hope you all enjoyed. Hopefully you all learned something new and uh, are trying something new. Let me know what you think in the comments box below of the garden. And I'm glad I got this walk through in. It's nice first person uh, kind of narrative of, of everything that we see when we walk through the garden. So it's gonna be great to do updates on and it's gonna be great when it starts growing. So I will talk to you all later. I'm gonna get out of the sun. Enjoy your day, stay safe, grow bigger, go home. I'll talk to you later.